Welcome back to 2A Wolf. Let me show you what we've done. Hi, welcome back to 2A Wolf. Can I show you what we've done? Um, as far as what we did with the uni struts anyways, went ahead and uh, painted the pieces a little bit to help match what's going on with uh, the camper build. So I'll show you that. Here's this panel, you can kind of see um, there some of the ripples in there. You can see it probably better on the camera than, than not. Some of the places that, you know, because on the first panel I was using using the caulking type adhesive. Bolted through. Here's the uni strut on the inside, painted it white. There's the little spacers that I was talking about. I just got the pipe to get the spacers so that way it holds, holds it uh, nice and level. And got the nice white on the inside. Got the driver's side done. I did, I kept looking around for, I kept looking around for camper shell um, weather stripping stuff that goes between the camper shell or the topper and the top of the bed. I've learned a lot about the Dodge bed. Really strange. But anyways, the problem was is that the gasket for the truck topper, some of it was inch and a half, inch and five eighths. I found two inch. But remember, my panels are two and a half inches thick. So none of them were thick enough. Then I was thinking, well, if I buy it and then I cut it and I'll have one and a half strip in there. I did start, I did come across some of the drainage hose, discharge hose, there we go. I came across some of the discharge hose and I thought that would be best for my application. It's waterproof, it's rubber, it'll give a good shock resistant in there and I can just cut it up. I ended up getting 25 feet of it. And that way I can use it as a gasket material and it doesn't look bad on the inside. You can see the blue down there. It doesn't look bad. So I'm just going to do that. That'll work fine for what I'm doing. And I'll get I'll clean up the corners and make it look all nice. Now the front panel. Put a lot of thought into this front panel because I'm going to have some electrical. Now this thing going to have a, a lot of stuff. But the front panel, if you can imagine, so the bed will be down here. You can imagine the front panel <clears throat> is really not going to do too much because our heads will be at that end. But I'm going to have a fan up here on the top, probably that side. It doesn't matter either side. And then I'm going to have the controller, some voltmeters. I want to put in like two reading lights, USB, maybe a couple of shelves. So I started thinking... Well, if I'm going to build this, what if I channel the foam board so the wires can stay behind the interior masonite type stuff? So this part, if I channel into the foam, I can have the wires behind the masonite that's going to be up there. So the solar lights, the um, solar uh, panels, the wires coming from that can stay behind. It'll go through the roof. It'll go down behind that panel, and then I can have them come out down below underneath because that's where the battery's going to end up being. I'm going to put the battery in uh, underneath a pop-up shelf back in there, and I can have all the wires there and have everything there. The only thing that won't be back there, I keep thinking about what to do with the power inverter because I do use a CPAP machine and we are going to want to probably, you know, charge your phones or something. And during the day, it's going to power the RV little chest freezer refrigerator thing that we're getting. I'm guessing, I don't know, I haven't really thought of it, thought about it too much. I'm thinking that the power inverter, I was thinking about getting a 2000 watt power inverter. I'm thinking about probably doing a panel over there and maybe mounting it there. And then if I need to get the power inverter uh, power, the 110, into our tent or our enclosure area, then I can just use an extension cord and then that's where the refrigerator is going to be. 
So next is trying to figure out how to channel the foam to let the wires through and where to place the switch panel for the lights, the MPTT solar controller, and that type of stuff. So that part might be a little challenging, but I think I think it can be done. It shouldn't be a big deal. I think it could be done. Let's try. To help keep track of stuff, what I'm gonna end up doing, okay, so I already cut the, the plywood. So the plywood actually is going to sit on the face here and go all the way across over there. And then the foam, you can see the gap over there. The foam's actually going to sit here and the aluminum corner is going to tie everything together there. So I cut the plywood, I cut the foam, I left the half inch, so that way you can sit on the face. I left the two inch gap up on the top. I'm, I'm thinking in order to keep track of this, I'm gonna find the dead center of this, and then I'm just going to have a section, probably, maybe 12 inch by 12 inch. And then I'm gonna put some channels where the wires can come up into that 12 inch area. Because remember, this foam is actually going to hang over into the bed a little bit. So the wire's gonna be able to go right up through there or whatever the middle is, go right up through there. So I can have the solar wires come down from the top all the way down to the battery. From the battery, go up to everything, switch panels and switches. And then I'm also going to have a light bar, if you can imagine with me. So the front panel is gonna be on, it sticks up about eight inches or so, maybe 10 inches higher than the cab. There's gonna be a long light bar there. It's either gonna be right on the front or it's gonna be up on top, but I have to make sure I still have enough room because the plan is I can drive out an eight foot, eight foot opening. That one's a tad low, but eight, eight foot opening, that has to be lower than eight foot so I can get the truck in and out. So I don't forget what's going on. We'll go to our handy dandy dry erase board. Roughly, this is the foam. So I'm coming over 34, and three quarter. I'm coming over this way to about center. And then I'm coming down 12 inches from the top. And I'm making this one foot, one foot square. Oh, I got some glare, sorry. So that way, once I cover everything up, so I'll know where to find it. So I need to get some channel in here so the wires will come down anywhere. I'm gonna to try to make a, a slot. Solar wire will come down, come over this way. Um, some switches will come this way, and voltmeter. Um, the, M, the MPTT or MPPT, the solar controller actually doesn't mount on a face of something because the wires go into the face. So I think I'll end up mounting, so down here on the bed of the truck so the battery will be down here this is the bed of the truck battery will be down here the charge controller i'll mount down here and and then the inverter that wire will just come around yeah actually those wires will come around here and the inverter i'll just put the wire up underneath the lip of the bed and then just put the inverter like right over there i think so I'll have to leave that on there so I know what I'm doing because I'm gonna just try to cut some of this out <clears throat> so there's room to get the wires down and through. Oh, and then the light, the running light, that'll be mounted on the outside of this wall panel. Somewhere, I'll probably have to buy the wall light to, or the, the big light bar so I know where the power's gonna come in. So I might just, if it's at this end, then those wires will go through the face of that front panel and I'll just have the wires come straight down and then I'm gonna have a big switch box for all my stuff. <clears throat> I 
I did think about maybe I should have a switch out here somewhere. So if I want to turn on a cab light or something so I can see what I'm doing or whatever, I can do that. But I don't know. Maybe I'll just have a tap light. And then that way, once I'm in there, I can just hit it with my foot and shut the light off. But I got to figure out a way to channel out that foam in order to get the wires down. Well, this is what I'm talking about. I kind of marked it out. So I have a channel that the wires will go up through from the battery and stuff and then have a switch panel. Just enough room to put some switches on, maybe his and her light type of deal. And then I kind of drew a line where I want the channel to come down for the light bar. It's going to be on the front and the solar. Now I'm just remembering I'm going to have a fan on this side. So I need to put a fan channel on here because the switch for the, the power for the fans got to come down through here and also go up and then have have it go to power so that means i'll put a maybe down here at the bed level i'll have like a bus box yeah made a mess but it worked so now i have a channel i got fat fingers but that's about roughly maybe a half inch and i don't have to worry about the corners too much just enough to get a couple of a couple of switch panels in here or whatever i need to mount so i accidentally set down the saw in the wrong spot mason i'll be on top of that that way I can just cut in a hole, the wires will be up in there, it'll make it nice and pretty. Once I started looking at the panel and notched it out, I realized that that 52 inch light bar that I'm gonna put on there, it doesn't say where the, the cord comes out of the light. And I'm worried that if I channel this, that the bracket, the bracket should be out here if the wire comes that way over there, it has to go all the way across to come in. I'm gonna order some stuff before I do my other channels. So the next time on 2A Wolf, we'll go through, look at the panel with the other stuff, the lights, and try to get that stuff done. So we'll see how that goes. So I need to order some lights and maybe a switch panel. So thanks for following along on 2A Wolf. And I'll see you next time. Make sure you hit the share, like, subscribe, and leave any comments you have below. You know what to do. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.